Oh, mira, mira. What have you done? Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Mira. Today I'm talking about the difference between using a full frame camera compared to using a micro four thirds. And now if you're new to photography and you're on a budget, you're probably thinking about what type of camera and um, system you want to invest because it's not just the camera body, it's also all of the lenses that you're going to get with that. So this is really something to think about uh, when you're starting out. And it's also important what type of photographer you wanna be. So if you wanna hike a lot, if you wanna be a landscape photographer and you're gonna carry your gear around, you know, up mountains, up hills, then a micro four third system is actually more suited for a person like you. If you wanna be a sports photographer or a portrait photographer, then maybe just invest into a full frame system. Now I'm mostly a landscape photographer and mostly I spend my time in the woods. So technically speaking, a micro four third system is suited for me. And this is why I started with a micro four third system. It's small, it's light and it's cheap and it you know delivers the results, the ones that I need. So why the hell did I switch to a full frame camera then? For those of you who follow me on this channel probably remember that this summer when we went to Tuscany, um, I actually missed a photo shoot because my Lumix G9 started having issues with the sensor and I think it's also the motherboard. Well, then it got better, it started working again and two weeks ago when I was hiking up a hill, I hiked for three hours, woke up in the morning, got there when the light was perfect, I fired up my camera and yeah, it was a black screen again. So I was pissed off, I didn't take one photo even with my cell phone, I was really angry, just packed up everything and went, went back home, said, no, I'm gonna buy a new camera. So here we are. So I was actually waiting for the Lumix GH6 to come out, which is going to come out at the end of this month, at least that's what they say, it's October 2021 by the way. And I, you know, I said, you know, I'm gonna use the GH6 for my videography and I'm gonna use my Lumix G9 for photography and I can share the lenses because the beauty of micro four thirds system is that all lenses fit every camera as long as it's micro four thirds. But when I started to think about the GH6, you know, it's going to be a two and a half thousand euro camera when it comes out. And yes, it will pack a bunch of videography features, uh, but still, you know, it's more than the Sony Alpha 7 III that I have, which has better autofocus, higher dynamic range, and it's a full frame system. So instead of repairing my Lumix G9, which would cost as much as the camera is worth now, I I'm just decided I'm gonna sell everything and just go uh, for this one camera with this one lens and maybe in the future buy new lenses. Because oftentimes I find myself just shooting in a focal range of 24 to 70 or to 100 millimeters. And this is the lens I have on my Sony. So to give you a kind of comparison as to what you can expect in terms of dynamic range from a micro four thirds Lumix G80, which I'm recording this on, it's a 16 megapixel camera, which also has 12 stops of dynamic range, I think, give, give or take. Uh, and a Sony Alpha 7 III, which has 15 plus stops of dynamic range. So all the settings were the same, base ISO on both, on the, on the Lumix G80 it was 200, because that's the base ISO, the lowest. Here I went to 100. Uh, and in both cases I shot at f8 aperture. Now of course this one is going to be sharper because it's a micro four thirds, but I'm mostly looking at the dynamic range because you can see in the background it's really, really bright. So I'm hoping to see more details in the bright areas coming from this camera. And to give you a kind of comparison between the lens sizes, this is a 24 to 70 millimeter f2.8 lens and this is a 24 to 120 millimeter uh, micro four thirds equivalent. So yeah, you can see, and this one weighs, I think, 200 grams. This one weighs almost a kilo. This is the Sigma uh, 24 to 70, and it's heavier than, I think, my Lumix G9 with the Super Telephoto 100 to 300 lens together. So this is one of those kind of typical shots where on a micro four thirds camera I wouldn't really struggle with the light because I'm stopping it down to f11. Now here of course f11 might not be enough to get everything in focus, especially the little teeny tiny grass right in front of the camera, which means that I'm going to have to focus stack so many more times to get everything in focus. On a micro four thirds I would have to put my camera further away because of that crop factor, meaning that the focus distance and elements would um, inevitably be further away from the lens, giving me a much higher 
um, depth of field or much deeper depth of field, getting everything in focus. So this is really a benefit of a micro four thirds camera compared to a full frame. However, when it comes to dynamic range, yeah, this just beats you know any sort of micro four thirds because this is those 15 plus stops of dynamic range and on a micro four thirds you get to about 12. But there is a benefit of the full frame camera in this situation. Now, because I have to stop down to f11, my shutter time is going to be much longer. So everything that's moving is going to capture is going to be captured as motion blur. But uh, since it's a full frame sensor, I can shift my ISO quite high. So 1600 or 3200 ISO on this particular camera is not even an issue. Now on a micro four thirds, yeah, I would probably never go to, to 3200 ISO because I know I would get too much noise into the shot. So. On one hand, I'm benefiting because I can shoot with wider open apertures to get everything in focus and keep the ISO low. On this camera, however, I can shoot with a tighter aperture, a smaller aperture, but you know, the ISO can be higher because it's a full frame camera. So, you know, the real benefit actually is just the weight and the size of a micro four third system. So now for some handheld shots. I'm going to try and freeze um, everything in motion because as you can hear it's quite windy and the grass is moving. I can also use that to my advantage by basically capturing motion blur and softening out the image combined with the wide open aperture. Yeah, this could be quite interesting. So um, as you guys can probably tell, this is the first time I'm actually using this camera outdoors. So wish me luck. Now the one thing that I'm missing on this camera is the flippy screen. This only has a tilt screen like this. As it's awesome for photography, of course, it's a little bit difficult um, you know, to do video because this every Lumix camera I think has a flippy screen. So I've switched to the Sony for this one. Now I want to talk about depth of field because people usually say that you cannot get that full frame look on a micro four thirds camera. And yes, it's true. You can not get the real full frame look like the, the whole full frame look, but you can actually get really close to what a full frame camera does because you can easily buy lenses that are aperture f 1.2, 1.4, 1.7 on the micro four thirds camera because they're not that much more expensive. Now on a full frame camera, they're really expensive. So technically, if you have lenses which are low, wider aperture, you can you can easily get the look that you're seeing right now. This is shot at f 2.8, and if I was to have a micro four thirds camera with a 1.4 lens, for instance, I would kind of get the similar look. But it is true, you cannot get the full full frame look. Now, if you look at this guy, this is Tony. Say hello, hello, Tony. Yeah, he's known for making videos look really, really shallow depth of field, and even he admits it that you know he's going overboard. So with a micro four thirds camera. This look is something that you actually cannot achieve. And honestly, just to be perfectly honest, I don't think that's a look anybody actually wants. I mean, it looks really, really weird. So for me, having a micro four thirds lens with an aperture of f1.4, I'm just satisfied. I can also take portraits with this, for instance, 42 and a half millimeter f1.7 lens. I can get beautiful portraits with this and 42 and a half millimeters in full frame would be equivalent to 85, which is the perfect um, portrait focal length. So you can get the shallow depth of field on a micro four thirds, it's just harder or impossible to go overboard. So thank you, Tony, for showing us this. Ah, now the wind is starting to pick up, so I'm gonna finish my video right over here. So what type of camera system is the best for you? Well, it depends on how much money you wanna spend because you always have to think about the lenses that you're going to invest in the future. Now, if you are going to travel a lot, if you're gonna hike a lot, and if you're gonna take landscape photos and you don't wanna spend a lot of money, so you need light, cheap, and effective gear, well, then just go for a micro four third system because having something like this with you, you now it's really so easy and it doesn't take a lot of space and you get the photos that you want. But if you're going to go on a professional route and you wanna take portrait photos or fast moving subject photos, then invest in a full frame system. I would skip the APS-C, so the middle ground altogether, because you either want it to be cheap, um, light and effective, or you want it to be like full flexibility of a full frame camera. So that's my advice. And if you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing, hit the like button. And if you have any comments or questions about the Lumix, about my camera, about the new camera, please leave that down in the comment section. I would love to answer all of it. So thanks for watching. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.